So I'm sitting here thinking to myself, what Yamaha sled am I gonna pick for this week's test ride? Obvious choice, a new Viper. But then this voice in the back of my head says to me, Yamaha sent us a brand new Apex. What is an Apex? Is it a sled lost in translation, or does this manly brute of a machine represent a muscle car style throwback of days of old, with modern amenities and refinements? Does the raw aggression of a four-cylinder, four-stroke torque monster sitting under the hood, waiting to spin the track like a fresh drag slick on the rear of a 60s Stang fit the bill? Well, let's find out. When you stand back and look at the Apex, it's clear this snowmobile is of a different design generation but it's absolutely undeniable that this snowmobile has a bad-to-the-bone reputation for performance and an incredible history of rock-solid reliability. And you can't argue it's fully equipped. Power steering, a massive 998cc four-cylinder four-stroke 150 horsepower engine, X-up exhaust valve, single-shot float rear suspension, 128-inch track length, a big tall windshield, as well as dual Yamaha Performance dampers. Yes, that rear hatch shock bolted to the rear of the sled, as well as one under the hood, are actually pretty cool pieces of technology that settle vibration in the chassis for a better, smoother ride. You gotta admit, it's pretty much at the Escalade level of standard equipment. So it's got lots of stuff, but does the sum of all parts truly make this a better snowmobile, or does this four-stroker just represent a heavy conventional platform with an extra half foot of seat foam. One thing I've learned and learned well is to come up with my own opinion. And so that's precisely what I've done. Initially, the Apex is actually quite comfortable from behind the bars. It's warm, both on the body and the hands. It delivers really nice sight lines of the trail. And while I may prefer a reduction of 20 to 30 pounds without the power steering, I actually like the easy steering and minimal effort required to move this cruiser through the twisties. Many folks that I've talked to tell me that you can't ride an Apex fast and it's just a heavy old four-stroker. But I'm here to tell you, they're wrong. Well, mostly. It doesn't take too much aggression to show that the Apex indeed is a heavy sled, but it never claimed to be light. Heck, it's got power steering and a four-cylinder engine. But to say you can't push it hard, well, that's just a misconception. And actually, I kind of enjoy the way this sled handles. It's much more conventional, yes, but there's something about the flat planted feel of a heavier, lower sled that appeals to me when shredding the S-Bends. And when riding aggressive, there's something the rest of the industry can't even come close to. It's a four-cylinder, four-stroke motor. This thing is throaty, and yes, it's aggressive. While we all love the 1049cc Yamaha engine found in the new Viper and the 7000 series Articats, I think the reason we all claim it to be the best four-stroker is because this four-cylinder wouldn't fit. The spool up and smooth but still powerful delivery is impressive. No turbo, just torque, and loads up. The 128 inch track sure helps keeping the apex hooked up on the trail or the lake, but it's what's inside that track that's a totally different animal. The rear skid is called a single shot due to its use of a single Fox Float 3 VX shock doing the work of both the shock and the spring. It allows the rear skid to be 10 pounds lighter over the previous version. What do I think of it? Well, Truth be told, I think the old pro-action tunnel adjust rear skid Yamaha used for years delivered a superior ride and the tunnel tunable dial was super cool, but more importantly, exceptionally functional, allowing easy changes to the massive Olin's single stage coilover. The Fox Float 3s on the front end deliver great showroom appeal and an acceptable ride out on the trails, but yet again, I think there's a better answer from Yamaha's past. The Soki black anodized piggyback clicker shocks worked so good on the 2008 Apex. I understand that these non-adjustable shocks are lighter, but honestly, we already know that this ain't about weight. Give me some adjustability. With that said, the ride is good up front. When I pushed the sled to its limits, I missed compression adjustability, but otherwise, I think it's a nice rebuildable shock for the consumer that does ride pretty well. To ride this sled fast and aggressively, you have to be prepared to ride it differently than all the other horses in the stable. But after a full day out on the trails, I realized what a lost art it is to ride a more conventionally designed sled fast. Because of its very wide weight distribution and much girthier weight at that, you need to throw your body into the inside of the corner and reach your leg outside the bodywork. Sure, for all of us newfangled, lightweight two-stroke riders, we don't have to do a lot of shifting of weight because it's centralized and light. But I remember this feeling of shifting to the inside of every corner to keep the ski planted backing the sled into a corner with lots of throttle, and then lighting the fuse on exit. 
And let me tell you, this four-cylinder Apex will haul the mail and its extra weight with no complaints from the power plant or me. She fast. It's no surprise the Apex gets the short end of the stick in this industry. It's old school looking and it's old school design and not even in the same zip code as those sleds fighting over the weight race. But once you get over all of those complaints and extra seat foam, the truth is it's a pretty dang good sled. And if your pocketbook can afford all of these extra features, you might just agree with me. If you enjoyed the video that you just watched, like it and then subscribe to our page for more great content from Snowtracks TV.